Hello, 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 and here we are at another Glue Wednesday. Hey, I'm going to give the audience a time to build, but great news. P.S., by the way, I'm using the old system. Somehow the new system was kicking me out. <laughs> the system that they wanted to force me to use, I got kicked out of it. Hey, Annette. <laughs> and so actually, <laughs> I'll be able to see now the thumbs. And, and then send me a thumb or something. Let me see if I can see the emoji. Because the, the the new system that they had didn't allow those. But right now, it kicked me out of the new system back into the old system. And so I'm more I'm comfortable in here. You know, I'm old school anyway. So, yeah, we got less than two minutes before the message starts. Well, Annette, if you sent the thumbs up. It, no, not not there. I mean, click on the, um, the like or the, the love buttons that go up on the screen. Hey, hey what's up, Daryl? Is that Daryl Mitchell from 3150? Let me know. All right. Wow. All right. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Uh, hey. Oh, God. Yeah, the thumbs up do work. Yeah, and the other system, they didn't work. Okay. <laughs> 3150 in the house. What's up, Dale? <laughs> we got uh, less than a minute for today's message to go up. Yeah, so this is all fun. I tell you, boy. Technology is wow. Well, God bless you, man. You see, you now you see that that instant recognition, right? That's us, man. That's us. That's fa that's family. That's grand in the house. And hey, what's up, Dale? <laughs> Two thirty-one fifties in a row on me there. Okay, Broadway. Hey, thirty-one seventy Broadway. Boom. 3150 Broadway, my two brothers right there in the feed. Hey, look, this if, if this is your first time on Glue Wednesday, welcome. Glue Wednesday is actually the genesis of the whole program anyway, because I've been doing Glue Wednesday for about two or three years now. And Glue is G-L-U-E, God's love undoes everything. But I created it because so often people would say that Wednesday was hump day. Well, in the old school, when uh, work week was Monday to Friday, that's why they said that Wednesday was the, the hump day and, and the, to where you get over to the weekend. And I say, well, you know what? The truth is that everybody doesn't work Monday to Friday, one. And then two, Wednesday is actually the middle of a traditional seven-day calendar week from Sunday to Saturday. And so Wednesday is the midday that keeps the week beginning and the week end together. So that's why I call it the glue, and it puts us in a prayerful mode right away. And that's why my glue is G-L-U-E, God's love undoes everything. Not that it tears things apart, but that whatever is torn apart, it will undo that tear and put it back together for you. So that's why I say that the glue is, it's not about the hump day that the need to get over, but it's about the glue, the need to keep it together. Because that's what we constantly need is are different ways to, to keep it together, you know? Because, hey, life is tough. You know, let, let, me never, let me never send a message that this is not hard. You know, we all know it's hard. Life is hard. But the key is we recognize, I recognize that we can't be up 24-7. I'm not. I'm not in a positive mood 24-7, 365. 20, 365, 24-7, whichever way you want to put it. But I'm up more than I'm down. I'm positive more than I'm negative. I'm going forward more than I'm going backwards. And there's nothing wrong with not going backwards, but just reframing it as stepping back every now and then. And just take a look at your work. Man, you know, we do a lot of good things, but we focus on the things that didn't work for us. And in the process of doing that, we beat ourselves down and then blame somebody else for beating us down. And watch out because blame for me is B-L-A-M-E, basically lying and making excuses. Because when we decide to blame someone else, we're actually giving them credit for controlling over our lives, over our life. And, the, and that's a lie. No one has control over your life as, as the, the way you do. There are people who can control circumstances and situations of how far you can go, but they cannot have control over your life. And so it, it's, it's, it's all about a mindset. And that's one of the things that I always talk about in any of my broadcasts. The other reason, by the way, that I mentioned at Glue Wednesday, this is the genesis, is because during this pandemic, I've expanded Glue Wednesday to where I also broadcast on Monday and Friday. So now I have Glue Monday and Glue Friday. So we got Glue Monday. And you know, this is, I like the old way because I get to see the, the thumbs up and everything. Thank y'all. I appreciate that. Because like I say, on the new format, which they said they were going to be forcing us to do, that they're going to stop 
allowing us to broadcast on the old one, you don't get to see the thumbs up and all of those things. So I, so I don't know. So I, like I said, I'm glad they forced me into this one today. Y'all might have missed that if you just came on. But yeah, they forcing me to use the old way. And so thank you. Yeah, there's some love emojis. Oh, y'all got me. Boo. Okay. But anyway, like I'm saying, you know, let's go on. So what we're doing now is called the gas series. Since I did Monday, I'm doing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday now. And the gas series is something that my, my one of my young brothers, uh, uh, younger little brothers, I call him Paulie, he gave me the idea. He said, why don't you make a different letter of the alphabet to focus every day? And I said, I like that. So we call it the alphabet series. So the reason we call it the gas series, because it's the glue alphabet series. So this, our focus is on the letter Q today, but if you, the next message is a Friday, and it's going to be the letter R. So I can tell you now, anytime during the broadcast, if you like to get a, a word that begins with the letter R in Friday's message, just put that in the thread. You know, just put that word in the thread. So, you know, uh, like, you know, if you remember, you know, just, just put that word in the thread and I'll weave that into next, into this Friday, Glue Friday message. But today the letter is Q. And so here are the Q words that people put into the feed. Quiet, queen, query, quarantine, quest, quality, and question. So those are the words that I use, and I put them in the, in the description as well, but I use those to create the message, I quit. <laughs> you know, and so I won't say, oh, there's one of the words, but if you gave me one of those words, you can be listening for that word and you hear it. And even if you didn't give me the words, now that I just mentioned them to you, that's one of the things that I like to do with my broadcast as well, is increase people's listening skills. See, if we know what to listen for, then that makes us more powerful. And that's a key in your life as well. If you know what to listen for, so you listen for the message that applies to you. Haven't you been to church or heard a sermon or, or a, a speech? And they say, you yeah, was talking to me because you knew what you were listening for. And so that makes a difference. Listening, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, is the number one communication skill. He who listens, who listens most wins. So being, you know, be conscious of that as well. I also always feature a poem, one of my original poems, to go with the message. But today, I'm giving the first Glue Daily Double. I've got two short poems that I'm going to feature today, and they are called Too Scared, and the other one is called Baggage Claim. And you'll see what those have, what, what they have to do with the message, I quit. And, you're, and I always, the last thing I do is, with the Alphabet series, the Black Gas series, I wear a different T-shirt that has something to do with the letter of the day, of the message. So with the letter Q, you're looking at, I, I don't have anything with a Q, but I got a big smile. Ain't that cute? Ha <laughs> ha. But you know, I got a big smile. I don't happen to have a T-shirt that has a letter Q on it. And that's okay, because now maybe I, you know, I'm thinking about your smile. What's the quality of your smile? That makes a difference. And this, this T-shirt is also from uh, an organization I belong to called AATH, which is the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor. We believe in the healing power of laughter and, and the study of healthy humor. See, so that's also part of it. You know I'm always going to have you laughing and joking on my broadcast, but it's healthy humor, not just telling jokes, okay? There's a difference between jokes and humor, and that's something people have to learn when they want to be a speaker. You know, a lot of times speakers say, you know, or people say, well, I don't want to be a speaker. You know, I really can't make people laugh. You don't have to get up there and make people laugh. Humor does not have to necessarily have a laugh, by the way. Humor is a feeling. And so sometimes if you just say something and somebody like, hmm, that's humor. You know, if you just make one of those things that where you see, you know, the cat playing with the, with the ball or yawn or with a little baby and you just go, hmm, that's actually humor. But anyway, that's not today's message. Today's message is the letter Q and, it's, and the message is I quit. And so what I want to really put on the base of that is us recognizing one of the things I always say to you is to control your vocabulary rather than allowing your vocabulary to control you. You see, when we hear the word quit, we tend to think of losing or even calling somebody a quitter, which is also calling them a loser. So what I decided I would talk about uh, uh, with in, into uh, infusing today's message is from my book, 
Starting Today. I have a book of informa- inspirational sayings called Starting Today. I used to be on TV. I was on w- WGN Minority Business Report uh, from 1999 to 2001, where I gave the inspirational 30-second message every week in a nationally syndicated show. So one of the messages, I put my first 75 messages in my book called Starting Today. And what it is, starting today becomes, this one is in spiral form, but I have it in in book form as well. You use it as a journal. And what happens is you get the, the inspirational message and then you say, you know what? I like that message. Starting today, I think I will. And then you write an inspirational message. Here's what that does. Entrepreneurs, you're on the, you're on the, on the, on the old chopping block here. You can now have a product of your own because once you've been inspired by the saying, it makes you think of something and you end up making an inspirational saying as well. Now using my 75, you've got your 75. There's your first book. Bam. Okay. <laughs> and that's one of the things that entrepreneurship is about is feeding into other entrepreneurs as well. Okay. But here was the saying that I used and it was called, I never lose. And neither should you. Losing like winning is a state of mind. When we establish a mindset that recognizes the need to compete against ourselves rather than surrender to other standards, our victories become more measurable, measurable and memorable. Winning is a state of mind. See, so it starts out talking about losing is a state of mind, but the truth is winning is a state of mind as well because a lot of, a lot of people aren't afraid to lose. I talked about this on my broadcast, my um, webinar that I did for the, um, this past week. And thank you, Roger Carroll. I see you and, then, and I know you were on there with us. What's up, Royce? What's up, Becky? What's up, Vic? Okay, um, that's not my, the end of my shout outs because I'm going to go through the message. But I talked about how so many times people are not afraid to lose or to fail because losing and failure comes with a pity point. Party. You know, somebody's going to come, oh, well, you know, they weren't going to let that happen, you know, because you were, you know, your race, your your sex, your height, your education. And then you start saying, yeah, that's right. That's why I didn't win. You know, yeah, you're right. I'm the, on the, and see, if we accept that. We accept it. So we're not afraid to lose or fail because somebody is going to make us feel good about losing a failure. Now, I'm not saying that we need, we should not encourage our kids or anybody when they suffer a loss. But just think about that fine line between empowerment and encouragement or um, uh, uh, what's the other word? Um, oof, ooh, I can't think of the word. Ah, time's up. But whatever. It's a thin, thin line between how you encourage somebody uh, and you ena- enabling. There we go. Enabling and encouraging. It's a, it's a fine line. Okay. So, so, you know, we're afraid, we're not afraid to lose or fail. We're afraid of winning and success because when we win or we succeed, we have to repeat. Don't you hear it in the sports all the time? How people say, you know, once, once somebody becomes a champion, it's hard to repeat as champions because people get up for that game a little differently. They get up for playing against you. They want to beat the champion. And so that's a part of it. See, so it is a legitimate side to it, but do the champions then say, well, you know what? I don't want to be the champ because I don't want to have to repeat and be successful again. No, they say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it again. So losing is a state of mind. And that's my, my why my quit. Remember I told you we have to step back and take a look at your work and just reframe things. See, my quit is Q-U-I-T. Quench my understanding that it's time. Quench the understanding that it's time. Know that there comes a time where you just have to let go. See, quitting is, you know, don't misunderstand what quitting is about. Sometimes it it means you have to let something go. I worked at the Wall Street Journal for 18 years before starting my my entrepreneurial business, which I've now been in 25 years, a quarter of a century. Now, people say, I quit the Wall Street Journal. Well, you can say that. Yes, I did. But I I wasn't angry. I got to get out of corporate America. I don't blah, blah. No, I was like, you know, it's time for me to go. It's time for me to do something else that I want to do with my life. And so it's okay, y'all, to sometimes quit, just to quench your understanding that it's time. But what did I just say? Your understanding. What do you have to understand? You have to understand you. And see, right now, as we're in this pandemic, this storm, a lot of decisions are being made. 
people are, are thinking about what do I really want to do? Do I want to stay with this company or do I need to, uh, am I now thinking about following a different passion that I have? See, you know, a lot of decisions are being made. And I also want to let you know, don't quit on yourself and think, well, now that the company sees that they don't need me five days a week, they're going to get rid of me. And I need to, no, 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 no. I need to be worried. No, no, no. I need to recognize that. Whoa, wait a minute. I can come up with a way where I can be of value to my company by showing them, look, y'all don't need me five days. Pay me for three. Pay me for four. Let me recreate the job title. That will help y'all. See, so you got to keep them in business so that they can pay you. You got to keep your company in business so that they can pay you. So come up with a way. Be creative right now. Come up with what you can do to help that company recover because everybody is going to be recovering. So now one of the things that you can do, because you know, maybe you can't come up with the job description, but you can come up with the mindset. You can have that mindset of I'm not a loser and I'm not a quitter. And I'm just going to ride this out and see how it works itself out. So that's why I'm going to introduce you to the two poems that I'm going to use today. And you'll see what they have to do with it. And these poems come from my book, I Found Out I'm Dying, A Celebration of Life. And the reason I like to show this, because this is also part of what's going on in our life. See, we get caught up in the headlines. I found out I'm dying. Oh, man, I don't want to talk about death. Well, then read the subtitle. It says, a celebration of life. I'm, this book is not about dying at all. It's about living. If you know, see, if you got diagnosed from a doctor that you have six weeks, six months to live, what would you do? Oh, man, I got six months to live. Well, I want to do that. And some people call it a bucket list. I don't call it a bucket list anyway. Whatever I'm doing with my life, I call it a live it list because I'm living what I want to live. I'm not kicking the bucket, okay? That's me turning negative into positive. Just the way you're looking at it, vocabulary control your vocabulary. Don't let your vocabulary control you. But anyway, what doctor can really give you six months to live, six weeks to live? You know, you could, you know, you, there are people with six month diagnosis that are still here six years later. There are people with six month diagnosis that are gone in six minutes. Dougie Fresh is on. Okay. So the thing is, you don't know how long you've got to live, but you do know that you are going to die one day. So that's what I'm saying by, I found out I'm dying. I know that one day physically, I won't be here. So I'm doing the things to celebrate my life. I'm going down my list. And again, I call it my live it list. I'm living my life. A lot of people are, oh, I'm living my best life. Yes, you are. But why did you wait to this year? You've been living your best life your whole life because this is the only life you get. So, you know, think about the words that we use because the words make a difference, y'all. The words transpire, tra transport, trans transfer from you to the people around you. And that could make somebody decide to give up or to give, to give, to give more hope. So here's what happens. In my book, I, I always, it's, I call it a storyline in poetry because I explain why I wrote certain poems and how you could use them. So these both, both of these two poems, are part of one another and they come with an explanation. So I'll read them to you. This next poem is called Too Scared and it's spelled T-W-O, Too Scared. And it's spelled T-W-O because at the beginning of any new relationship, you have two entities that are not completely sure they can trust the other. Yeah, and that's whether it's a, 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 a romantic relationship or a business relationship. But I was using romantic relationship in this. So, so often in our society, it is accepted that a woman need to be on her guard from being hurt by a man. But, sorry about this, guys, men are equally fearful of being hurt. In fact, any situation involving change can be applied to this poem. Too scared. You see, I don't know what you think I might do to hurt you that could be worse then what I don't know you might do to hurt me. But I'd be happy to open up and lay all my cards on the table in an effort to make you more comfortable and give us the chance to better understand one another and our fears, <laughs> if you'll go first. <laughs> all right? See, so we want the other person to go first because we're both scared. But one of us, you know, is acting like we're not scared. And the other one is saying, well, I'm willing to lay all my cards on the table. Somebody's got to go first, y'all. That's what life is about. So then it continues. 
And what about that new relationship? What makes it so hard for us to go first? Well, it's the experiences in our past relationships, experiences that we choose to call pain rather than lessons. I don't deny that lessons can be painful, but each person is brought into, your li into our lives to help us take a step, not always a step forward, because sometimes we need to reevaluate the road we're on, as I mentioned in another poem. But these lessons, excuse me, have also been called baggage. And I say that's fine. However, I'd like to affectionately call them baggage and recognize that as we unselfishly allow one another to work through our baggage, we work toward a better relationship that has a base of empathy. Thus the poem, Baggage Claim. Be sure to reread this poem, replacing the word baggage with lessons. Baggage Claim. You see, actually, if you aren't carrying any baggage from your past, we may not have as much in common as we thought. For as surely as you have parents who had parents, who were born unto parents, who were sons and daughters of someone born into an imperfect world after being conceived by a woman who knew a man who had an option, who had an opinion, your bags can be picked up at carousel number one. <laughs> See, so baggage claim, we've got lessons and people want to call them baggage. That's forcing the negative vocabulary into our mode of operation. We've all got baggage and it's okay. We learn, but part of that baggage is fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, right? Yeah, but you know, let's not beat somebody else down for a lesson that we learn from somebody else who we opened ourselves up to with false expectations, okay? It's a lot of stuff in one message, y'all, but I, isn't our life complicated? Didn't I say that at the beginning? It's tough. Life is not easy. So watch out for the baggage that you carry. For instance, on now on this uh, this Saturday, um, in terms of talking about losing and quitting, okay? This Saturday, I'm in the Toastmaster speech contest in the district round, and I've told a lot of people, but here's what I want to talk to you about in terms of how I want you to look at losing versus winning. In 1995, I was in the Toastmasters World Championship. I, I made it to where I was one of the top nine speakers in the world. But what Toastmasters does is they announce third, second, first, first, second, and third, but condescending order, third, second, and first. When they had finished saying third, second, first, they had not said my name. <laughs> and so when I went home and people said, well, Sporty, how'd you do in the contest? I said, I tied for fourth. <laughs> with the other five speakers that didn't take first, second, and third, because I never see myself as a loser. And that's what I'm saying to you. I don't ever see yourself as a loser. When you quit, it's quenching your understanding that it was time. You're not a loser. So that's what I said. I was tied for fourth with the other five who didn't take second, first, second, and third. In 2012, I'm sorry, in 2018, I made it to the level that I'm going to on this Saturday, the district level. And and um, and when they said uh, first, second, and third, well, now they said my name in the second place slot. So then I had people say, "Oh man, oh man, I, you know, I thought you should have won first. You know, I'm, you know, sorry you won second. Sorry, I won second. You know what, ladies and gentlemen, I then changed it to a speech that's called you still have to win second place.'" See, it's all how you look at it. I didn't come in second. I had to win second place. That contest, we had 10 compet content competitors, you know, and, and so therefore, and I, and I'm, and I apologize because I even just slipped up. We had 10 showcases, 10 champions. All of us were division champions competing for the district championship. And one of the things that I always say is I don't compete with anybody else. I compete with me to be better than I was the last time. So I won second place. I didn't come in second. And somebody had to take third. You have to finish fourth. You have to find your way to fifth. You have to see your way to sixth. You have to, to set yourself into seventh. You have to be equal the eighth spot. You have to nurture the ninth spot. And you have to take tenth. You know, you, wherever you land, you put a positive twist on it so that you can always see yourself as a winner. So that when you say I quit, 
It's just that I quenched my understanding that it was time to go. And you know, and, and on my Saturday message, my speech is called The Greatest. And my one of my chorus lines is that you have to, the part of the message is that I move from the want for being popular to the need for being respected. See, that's what a win is for me. I have, I need respect. I don't, I don't, I don't have to be popular. Popularity is nice, but if you don't have respect, you're in trouble. And that's why if y'all got on after, but you know, when you get off of this broadcast, I, I put a clip on there from the, one of my favorite movie, the 300. And it and that will show you, and, and I wanted to use that movie in case you hadn't seen it. That's why I put the clip on, because here's the lesson in that movie. Leonidas is the 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 um the leader of the of the Spartans, and there's 300 of them going up against thousands of Persians. So this one guy, ooh, I can't say his name, but he's got a hunchback. He was born with a deformity, but he's one of the Spartans, and he wants to be one of the warriors. So he comes up to Leonidas. He says, look, I want to be a warrior. I want to help you fight. And Leonidas says to him, well, lift your shield. And the guy can't lift his shield. And he said, well, you know what? Part of the magic in what we do is each warrior being responsible for protecting the one to his left from the thigh to the, to the neck. And if you can't do that, you can't be a part of the magic. See, so I always use that analogy when I'm talking to my military audiences, because what I say to them, how often have you joined the military and you had stereotypes about what other people would like because you didn't grow up with them. But when you're in that military and you're in a foxhole and from the old school, but with any kind of battle situation, what do you care about? You don't care about their race, their ethnicity, their gender, their politics. All you care about is respect and protect. Respect and protect. And that's why I say it's important, more important to be respected than it is to be popular. And when I looked at that clip from the 300, that's what I saw, the need in the, to be respected and protected. That's what he said. We are responsible for the person to our left from the side to the shoulder to the neck to respect and protect. How does that how does that transfer to us in the, in the um, civilian world? Well, we have to get rid of the stereotypes and recognize that stereotypes can be outweighed by respect and protect in the military. But also we have to choose to learn the lessons that say that we will be respected. Because if you if you look at the clip again, as you look at the clip, once the guy, once uh, Leonidas tells him that he can't be a warrior, but he said, but you're still one of us. So here's what you can do for us. And then he tells him, you can help us move the bodies. You can help bring water. He tells him, you're still one of us. You can, this is how you can serve us. But you know what? If you don't know who you are, guess what? If you don't accept who you are, then you will betray those of who those who do accept you who for you who you are. See, Leonidas said, I accept you for who you are, but you can't help us this way. Here's what you can do to help us. But since he didn't accept who he was, then he betrayed the people who did accept him for who he was. Mm, is that a lesson? He's the one that goes and tells the Persian where's the secret um, back door that they can use to trap the other Spartans and win this battle. Mm. So let the message sink in. If you don't know, if you don't accept who you are, you're going to betray those who do accept you for who you are. So it is important for us to love ourselves and like ourselves. And then a friend of mine, Tracy Brown, she has a site called, uh, a Facebook page that you can check out. It's called What's Mine to Do? See, what do each of us have to do to make it through, not just again, not just this storm, but everyday life. What do we have to do? And so she's got a a, um, a series going on just this week. And if you want to get on, it's at 4.15 to 4.45 Eastern time. And it's called Me Now. Me, period, now, period. And her tagline says, who's going to make things better? Me. When is the time to take action? Now. Okay, but you know, whether you go to listen to the series or not, you need to have that mindset. Me now. What can I do to take care of me now? Because that's going to help me take care of the people who I love as well. Because somebody around you needs you to be a good messenger. We've seen that in messages that I posted before. That does not go away.
But I, I want to just hit that line one more time because I actually just came up with it for this broadcast and I love it. If you don't accept who you are, you will betray the people who do accept you for who you are. Boy, that's speaking about it. So now what I decided to do was now just go back and take our Q words and group them. And let's look at quarantine versus quality. And therefore, we have to reframe because instead of saying we're spending quarantine time, I'm locked up with my family. How about I'm spelling qu spending quality time? I'm in with my family. Maybe you don't have family members, but guess what? I bet you're doing a good job keeping in touch with the people who are important with you, to you right now. You're seeing who your quality friends are. And quality friendships are so much more than quantity. You don't, again, popularity versus respect. The quality of our friendships and relationships, you know, because it could be a business relationship as well, is so much more important. That's one of the benefits that I'm getting in this situation is because I'm getting a chance to really make some quality friendships with people who I started having relationships with in my business last year. Because see, since my business has been with the military for nine years, I don't have much of a civilian um, um, foot in, in, the, in the civilian world in terms of my business growth. And that's what I'm trying to do. I have to grow my business so I can deliver the message. I'm a good messenger. <laughs> and so I need means to deliver the message. So I've been trying to build those relationships. And now naturally, and that's why I, what, another thing I said in, in my um, webinar on Monday was that you don't spread yourself too thinly. We do it physically. But even virtually, you can spread yourself too thinly because a lot of people are now, okay, let me join this networking group and let me get on this Facebook page. And you could be spreading yourself too thin because, because also it is during the chaos that the crime rises. you got somebody who's in, insincere joining the group just to get your information. And it's, and it's tough. They, that's the way, it, that's life, y'all. It ain't fair. It's just the way it goes, you know? So you have to be really careful about your alliances right now. And you have to be careful of, and, and sincere about who you align with because it, it goes both ways. So be conscious that quarantine versus quality, no, you're spending quality time right now also with yourself, really getting to know who you are so that you can make that decision about what you're going to do in terms of, quenching your understanding that it's time for you to continue being a winner just in a different a different direction. And then I looked at quiet versus question or query because question and query are interchangeable, but quiet versus question or query. In other words, you know, you, you do have to speak up. You know, you have to speak up and you, and you know, what they say, a closed mouth won't get fed. What do you need? and understand your needs versus your wants. Going right back to what I was saying about this, the um, Spartans. What do you want versus what do you need? I thought I wanted to be popular, but I found that I needed to be respected. That, by the way, is in the, in the, in the speech message. And I'm gonna also put the link in this thread. If you like, Saturday morning is when I'm gonna be in the competition. So I would love to have you there in the, in the Zoom audience and you, and, you, and you will really enjoy watching how it works. Because you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we have to have, here's my mindset. I could die before things change. See, so, so you have, you know, and don't don't misread what I'm saying there. Right now, you have to live as this, as if this is the way it's going to be until the day that you die, because you don't know when that day is. So why spend your time being upset about, you know, because this is an inconvenience, right? Yeah. Oh man, I need to get back out. I need to do this. Why be upset about that when the, the day before? It's all lifted and we be out, you get hit by a car from being out or or you get some type, you know, something happens and you lose your life. That's real. You know, I'm not talking about death. I'm talking about life. So live this moment because you don't know how long it's going to be this way. So how about getting good at this so that you can find a way to enjoy it? And that's what's going to help us get through is when we stop and enjoy what we call God's will in the first place, because God is not good several times. God is good all the time. So we have to slow down, pace ourselves and say, oh, wow, here's what's going on right now. Here's what I got to do. And I got that in another part of my message. So I'm going to save that for when I get to that, because right now I'm talking about quiet versus question or quality or, or query. And also, y'all, you know what, when I say about being quiet, Man, you got to share your message. You got to share your message. 
when you inbox somebody, I, like I tell y'all, when you inbox me, the first thing I do is click on your name and go to your page and see if you shared that message on your page. If you didn't share it on your page, 11 out of 10 times, I'm not forwarding it. You know, you, you, the blessing y'all is in sharing, especially when somebody sends me something positive inbox, because I prefer positive. I, you know, I, I don't really, I gotta tell you, I don't listen to the whole negative message because I know what the problem is. I'm here to feed the solution, not to build the problem, okay? And that's why I say, to you, you know, watch your news intake. You know, it's just like watching a soap opera. You can watch a soap opera from Monday to Friday. And when you watch, and it's an hour soap opera, or 30 minutes, whatever the soap opera is. But when you get to, when you review on Friday, they've moved about 10 to 20 minutes in the storyline. <laughs> All right. That's what the news is about right now, y'all. It ain't a whole lot of updates. You know what I want to see on the news? Cure found. That when, until that headline hits, all I want to do is just check in on As my pastor, Stephen Furtick, says, he said, I don't watch the news. I keep up with the news. So you know, just know what's going on, but don't sit there and watch it and, and keep feeding yourself in there. But let me go back to what I was saying about that negative news. Once you put it in the inbox, just forward this before they take it down. You know, everybody needs to know this. Put it on your page if everybody needs to know. Oh, yeah, I feel great that you chose me to be one of the people to send the inbox. But come on, y'all. That ain't going to get this. That's not going to be the solution. It needs to be posted on your page so that somebody who didn't know or somebody who's in position to make a difference can see it and they can forward it. That's what that's how you can stop something from getting taken down when it's in a lot of people's feed. So post your messages, as your, whether it's your warning, or but especially your positive message, y'all, post that on your page because you have to share you as a blessing. You are a damn good messenger. And a lot of people are sitting and waiting for you to say what you think we should do so that they can make a move. And that's why it moves us to the last two letters in Q. My two Q words are queen and quest. A queen and quest. Do you know what the queen is? The, and there are plenty of definitions, but the, if you play chess, the queen is the most powerful piece on a chessboard. And if you look up it in the, de in the dictionary definition, it tells how it can move in different directions, direct, diagonal, horizontal, backwards, forwards. The queen is the most powerful piece on the board. And to quest means to hunt or search to hunt or search, that's a quest. We're looking for something. So what I'm saying to you is we've got to be willing to make the moves needed to handle this storm. Our, and this is the message I told you was coming later. Our best doctors, scientists, and cooperative people are on the case. We've got our best doctors, scientists, and cooperative people on the case trying to find the solution, not the problem, not padding the problem, but seeking the solution. That's the quest. Now, what do you fall in? Do you have somebody that fits one of those categories? They're either a doctor, a scientist, or a cooperative person. And by a cooperative person, I mean someone who's going by CDC's you know, guidelines of, of the social distancing, trying you know, not to go out because check out when you go out you give the, the virus another possible potential host to carry the virus somewhere else yeah it's tough being in the home but guess what didn't you, uh, you know, luther bandros a house is not a home i don't know what that has to do with it but i know my sister loved luther bandros um uh, <laughs> um, shout out. But the thing is, yeah, you know, you have to be one of the cooperative persons. And by being cooperative, you can do, this is what I'm doing to be cooperative. I'm trying to stay positive. And I thank you all because you're being cooperative by tuning into my broadcast and then sharing it. Don't inbox this to y'all, to nobody, y'all. Tag them, you know, send it in their posts. You know, send the message out so that people can get a positive message. That's what being a cooperative person is all about. And, you know, when you fit into that, when you're making sure that you're doing that, then you have that power because you do. You have the power to be one of the positive messages that we need to listen to. And someone needs you to make a contrib contribution right now. So please do. Please do. And thank y'all for the thumbs up and the hearts because I'm I'm at the end of my message now. And, uh, you know, my energy is feeling good, you know, because, this, you know, this when we put all those cues together, we're all, you know, our cue, even though it's not spelled with a Q, it's C-U-S, that's my cue to step up and be who I have to be. 
So put that whole message together, y'all, and recognize that you should quit. Quench your understanding that it's time, but it might not be time to leave something. It may be time to move forward. You have to, and the reason I use baggage, right? Because you got to let something go for you to go forward. And you have, it's two people scared. You're not the only one afraid. So is the other person. Take that chance. You be the queen. You be the one that's going to make the quest work. <sighs> And meanwhile, speaking of quest, our Friday message where we would thank you all for the thumbs up and the love. I, oh, I love the, the old system. See, old school is so wonderful. But Friday's message will be featuring the letter R. So if you want a word with the letter R, you can, you can be a co-author. Everybody who just gave them a letter Q or any letters you've given in past messages, guess what? You get to tell people that you co-authored a message with Sporty King. Bam! So imagine <laughs> Imagine, you know, you know, the higher up I get, the higher up you get, and the higher up you get, the higher up I get. Because I'll say, man, oh, you know, so, you know, I co-authored a message uh, through them. They gave me a word. Yeah, come on, that's what we have to do. But if you'd like to get a word in with the letter R, just throw it in the thread right now. If you like copies of the poems, because I'm going to put them together in a nice little uh, colorful commemorative piece with an e email, an electronic autograph that you can, you know, you can frame it or you can just post it on your wall and any way you want to share it, email me at unclesporty at gmail.com. And I always explain that even if someone's been on before. But the reason I say email me, because especially in these days of security, your security system might look at my email address as a security threat or spam and never let you know. But if you email me, then I will be replying to you and therefore I can get through your firewall. Uh, but uh, so the letter will be R for set for Friday. Meanwhile, don't forget the S in Saturday will become because there's going to be an s in, in glue monday but the s in saturday is the toastmasters district competition that i'll be competing in and i guess i'm going to put the event bright uh link in this thread and i would love i may not see your face because we're expecting a whole lot of people there are 11 people uh showcasing in this competition and um and, and uh, it's from 9 to 11 30 by the way but my part of the competition will be from probably from nine to probably 11 to probably 10 30. then they have a second contest that's after that they won't announce the winners until the 11 30 thing so if you want to just come in see and i don't know what the speaking order we won't find out the speaking order till um saturday morning so i don't know what number speaker i'm going to be but i'm in there from one speaker number one through 11 and that will happen between 9 and 10 30. so if you want to get in check me out and then you go on about your business that's fine because you know i'm going to post the, the uh results anyway uh and most likely with me holding up the number one <laughs> for being the winner because <laughs> one thing you know sporty king doesn't lose but you know what that's because i got you i got winners behind me winners beneath the wind the wind beneath my wings i can't lose and you have to recognize that i'm willing to provide that same win for you so let's keep winning let's keep keep positive and making a positive contribution to be one of those cooperative people and let's keep glue for front and center g-l-u-e god's love undoes everything this too shall pass thank you god bless you and i'll see you soon ciao